Okay, then. We've had the Six Nations. Now the post-mortems have happened. But where does this leave England in relation to their Rugby World Cup squad that Steve Borthwick will have to announce ahead of the tournament in September? Uh, this is the situation with England. They've got four remaining games before they have to pick a squad. Although in reality, I think that squad will be picked before those World Cup warm-ups are over. Uh, interesting that England have got four games, which along with France is the most of any country. Most have got three or two in some cases. Ireland, for example, have two. New Zealand have two. Australia have two. Uh, England are going with four. Four consecutive weekends in the build-up to the World Cup. Maybe tells you a little something about where England's squad is at and the number of places that are up for grabs. It could just also be a, an opportunity to make a bit of cash. Um, we'll see. But anyway, this is my thoughts. Leave your comments. Tell me what you think. I'll be doing this for other countries as well coming up soon. So hit subscribe in the channel and then you won't miss a, won't miss a beat. I'm Tim. This is Egg Chasers. And um, uh, I will get myself out of the way for this. So there's a 33-man there's a 30, uh, squad for the Rugby World Cup, which is up to from the usual 31-man squad. And the way I see it is I'm looking at this and thinking there'll be roughly 18 forwards and 15 backs is the way I've kind of broken down the the numbers there. It's just my gut feeling on things. As for Lucid Prop, uh, Ellis Genge, he's on the plane. He's going. And I think and what I'll do is I'll put players in italics that are penciled in, likely to be in the squad, but not definite. And again, this is what I'm anticipating Steve Borthwick will select. For my own selections, I've got, uh, I'll put players in blue. Um, so here we go. Tight head prop. Uh, Kyle Sinclair, he's in. And I've put Will Stewart and Dan Cole likely to, to go along as well. Joe Hayes was a, a possibility, still is, I guess. But it, it probably tells you a lot about the lack of depth. Trevor Davison at New... Well, I was going to say Newcastle. He's now at Northampton. Um, Trevor Davison is another contender, but it probably tells you something about how really few options there are at tight head that that will probably end up being it. As for Hooker, Jamie George and Luke Cowan Dickey are the two standout. It's, it's one element of Eddie Jones's time in charge of England that he really didn't give any game minutes to any other hooker. My guess, George McGuigan. He's probably the most like Jamie George. He's a brilliant uh, mauling hooker and the maul and the line out seem to be a very, very important part for, for Steve Borthwick. So I think George McGuigan's probably most likely. As for second row, uh, Maru Itoji and Oli Chesham at the moment, they're on the plane. And who else? I've got one, potentially two more spots for second row. I think Dave Ribbons. He he had a good game against Ireland and he's, he seems quite impressive to me. And he's he has some George Cruz-esque qualities, which I think the England engine room's been lacking. And between Dave Ribbons and Ollie Chesham, I think you get a bit of that. What about a fourth second row? Well, the contenders would be Nick Ezekwe, uh, Johnny Hill, Joe Launchbury, I've put because of you know his experience, and I think he's a class player. And I've also put George Martin on there, who's been injured, coming back. He's playing now for Leicester, and I know Steve Borthwick absolutely loves him. So I'll put him on the radar. He's not out of it yet. Um, however, I don't think I'd pick any of them as things currently stand. I think I would leave it at Maruatoji, Oli Chasim and Dave Ribbons. And uh, I'll explain why, because in the back row, Courtney Laws, I, I think of him as a five and a half because I think he is your fourth lock, uh, but he's also a back row option. And as for the absolute definites on the plane, Tom Curry, assuming he's fit, he he'll be there uh, and two penciled in in Lewis Ludlam and Jack Willis, leaving one or two spots for the back row. And there are loads of contenders for these spots. But before I get to that, just to say that the loose head prop, one player I'm going to put in myself, I can't understand why he hasn't been uh, in so far as Val Rapava Ruskin. Um, as we go back through and fill up these spaces I've got, Val Rapava Ruskin would be in. He was in Steve Borthwick's training squad, didn't make the final squad. I don't know what Steve Borthwick isn't seeing. And I get there's a difference between a, a good club player and a good international player, but Val Rapava Ruskin just seems to me like a potential difference maker, set piece, and around the park. So I, I love him, and I hope he gets in. But I've put him in blue because I'm not holding out a great deal of hope, but we will see. Uh, as for the back row options, well, take your pick. Which which one or two would you have out of those? Which two would you have? You've got Zach Mercer, 
Sam Simmons, Alex Dombrandt, Ben Earl, Tom Willis, Ben Curry, Sam Underhill, Ted Hill, and Lewis, um, sorry, Tom Pearson. Uh, so many options. So many options. I'm going to rule a few out, though. I'm going to rule out Ted Hill, Sam Underhill, and Tom Willis because Steve Borthwick hasn't used them. He had a little look at Tom Willis, didn't call him up. And I think on that basis, I'm going, okay, well, they're probably out of the running at this moment in time. I'm also going to take out Sam Simmons and Ben Earl, purely because the the fact that whilst Steve Borthwick had them in his squad, he didn't use them or barely use them. So I'm, I'm going to say that they're out as well. Leaving four players there, Zach Mercer, Alex Dombrandt, Ben Curry. Dombrandt and Curry have been used. Tom Pearson as well, I've still got there. Now I'm hoping that what's happened is Tom Pearson is one of those players which Steve Borthwick couldn't pick because of the whole... EPS changes that he was allowed to or not allowed to make. Um, and if I had to just knock out players from this, I take out Ben Curry. Not because I don't like him, got a lot of time for him. I just think um, you've got Tom Curry and uh, and Jack Willis. And so he misses out. And Lewis Ludlam as well, for that matter. And who else do I take out? I take out Alex Dombrandt, massive Dombrandt fan. And before the Six Nations, I was calling for him to be in the squad. But I haven't seen enough, and he's had plenty. He's had enough chances. He has had moments, and he wasn't bad against Ireland. He just hasn't stamped his authority in a way that you need to. So, uh, might seem slightly left field in the case of Tom Pearson. I just love him. I think he's an absolute beast. Zach Mercer will become available by by those summer internationals, and I think he will be wearing the number eight shirt for England. And I'm having him in the having him in the squad, and that is my pack of forwards. With the ones in blue, the ones that um, are kind of, you know, curveballs or I'm hoping that are the case. The italics in white are the, the penciled in ones uh, with the um, with just the names in white, normal case. Then, uh, yeah, they're the ones that are on the plane. That is the squad as I see it at the moment. What do you think of that? 18 names. And I'd be pretty happy with that, to be honest. There's, a, there's, there's enough versatility. You could have one fewer out-and-out back row player or one more second row player or someone like George Martin, who's another second row slash back row, potentially. Uh, what would you do? Let me know in the comments as we move on to the back line and uh, scrum half, pretty simple. The two that have featured in the whole Six Nations, pretty much. Jack Van Portfleet uh, is there. He's on the plane. He, he's Steve Borthwick's number one at the minute. And Alex Mitchell, I imagine, will be there. As for the other spot, well, I'll come back to that because the two fly half, same goes. Owen Farrell... He's on the plane. Marcus Smith, pencil him in. And uh, centres, again, on the plane, Henry Slade. Uh, and pencil in Ollie Lawrence, who I think did enough to get himself up the pecking order, uh, probably wearing that 12 shirt for England. So that's the centres and the half-backs and the outside backs. So much competition for places here. I see the two that are, that are in, Freddie Stewart and Anthony Watson, and I think it's a bun fight between the rest of them. So let's go back round. Probably you're going to have Ben Youngs as your third scrum half. And that's not necessarily my call. It's just what I'm, what we can learn from what we've seen so far. And uh, at fly half, if there's a third one, George Ford will be the guy. And I'll, I'll come back to that one in a moment. As for centres, well, you've got two spots left, as I see it. Again, this is my composition of the squad. 18 forwards and 15 backs. Uh, you've got two spots left, and those are the guys most likely to occupy those spots. Left to right, Joe Marchant, Fraser Dingwall, Dan Kelly, Guy Porter, Manu Tuolangi. It's a shame Dan Kelly has been injured uh, and hasn't been able to play. I think he would have played. And, well, I mean, the upside is we've seen Ollie Lawrence now, and, and maybe that edges Dan Kelly out of the squad because Ollie Lawrence took his opportunity when it looked like Dan Kelly could have been the man in that 12 shirt. Uh, Guy Porter is handy, can play both positions. Manu Tuolangi can play both positions. Uh, Joe Marchant can have the flexibility of playing on the wing. Fraser Dingwall can play 12 and 13. I'm going Joe Marchant and Dan Kelly. I think more likely is that Steve Borthwick will go Joe Marchant and Manu Tuolangi. Or Manu Tuolangi and... I mean... Yeah, probably Joe Marchant and Manitou Alangi. I'm hoping he goes for Dan Kelly. I'm hoping Dan Kelly gets playing regularly, gets some time in the summer to show what he's about, and then you never know. As for the back three, 
Well, potentially five spots left, possibly four spots left, um, and five main contenders. I'm always thinking with, with this, by the way, there's, there's bound to be someone really obvious I've missed. So I apologise if I've missed someone. Do let me know. Uh, but Ollie Hassel Collins, Max Malins, Henry Arundel, Caden Murley, and Elliot Daly. Um, all at London clubs. Now look at it. Um, yeah. Saracens, Quinns, and London Irish represented there. Um, so how, how do you how do you shake this one down? I think Max Malins did really well. I probably wouldn't have had Max Malins before the Six Nations, but his performance in the Six Nations, I think, demands it. Henry Arundel is just a explosive, unpredictable player that, that brings you a bit of X factor. I absolutely love Elliot Daly. I think he would have been starting on the wing for me um, had he not got injured. And he's a, 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 maybe the best option at fullback um, instead of Freddie Stewart. So I think Henry Arundel and Max Malins, uh, you can pencil them in. And as for the final spots, those guys... For me, Caden Murley misses out, and I have Ollie Hassel Collins and Elliot Daly. That's how. That's what I think. What, what? Tell me what you think. But if you look and you're good at a bit of quick maths, you'll see that that is 16 players, and there's only 15 spots in the back line as I organised it because I took 18 forwards. So one of these players has got to go. And how do you square this one then? Does George Ford go, and you make do with Owen Farrell and Marcus Smith, and maybe Henry Slade is your occasional fly half option Max Malins has played 10 as well do you go that way do you drop Dan Kelly and you think Owen Farrell if you have George Ford and Marcus Smith Owen Farrell could be an inside centre if needed or do you drop one of your back three players uh, well the choice I've come to is that I drop Ollie Hassel Collins because Joe Marchant can play on the wing and that flexibility uh, could be really important. And I just think, I know people want Ollie Lawrence at 12 or a proper 12. I get that. I do. And I'm not suggesting this is what I want to be my first option. But there is enough evidence that George Ford with Owen Farrell at 12 can work. I think the uh, to make that really work, you can't have Freddie Stewart in your back three because you just need more gas than that. And I think with a really pacey 13 and a back and back three, Ford and Farrell could work. And I don't think that's necessarily done yet. So, yeah, like I say, there's an argument. You keep Hassel Collins and ditch George Ford or ditch Dan Kelly. Probably the likeliest choice is George Ford or Ollie Hassel Collins there, isn't it? And I pick George Ford because I think he's that good. Meaning that my 33-man 33, uh, 33 England squad for the Rugby World Cup, as things currently stand, is that. There's only four games left to prove yourself. Um, and there's some big European matches, big premiership matches, where players are going to have to have a say. And, and guys like George Ford are going to have to step up and start playing well for Sale Sharks, who will likely make the playoffs. So George Ford is going to have some big games or at least a massive game that he could take part in. So we will see. Uh, tell me what you think. Leave your comments. Please do hit subscribe. Um, I'd, I'd love to keep that subscriber number going up because there's loads more rugby content coming, and I really value uh, you being on board with Egg Chasers. Nice one. I'll see you on the next video.